enemies. Blaster, Juarez, time to get this party started. Don't you wish your blowtorch was hot. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Hoy? Great. Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. I understand that the inception of the film ha has an unusual beginning. It does. Yeah. My son, who was five at the time, he's now 11, uh -huh. brought home the preschool guinea pig from class and on the kitchen table began to tell my wife and I the story of how cute guy, which was the name of the guinea pig there, would be this little agent wearing army helmet and backpack and doing all this kind of cool stuff, you know, and from that sprang the concept of the G-Force. Oh, and he has his own credit, doesn't he? He does. He also plays uh, two of the three mice, the voices of the mice. And, really? And Max Favreau, John Favreau's son, plays the other. So he's, got, he's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a family affair. Fair it is. <laughs> They were an elite team of animal spies, known as G-Force, until Whoa! the government shut them down. I understand that the movie was shot originally in 2D, yes. and then it became 3D. That's correct. How, why was that? It's for a number of reasons. Um, when you're combining computer graphic characters into 3D, mm -hmm. if you shoot it with stereo, it becomes a very, very difficult problem in terms of calculating the Z-depth of where the characters go. It becomes quite technical. Mm -hmm. Another problem is that when you shoot 3D, you're kind of embedding within that photography certain stereo decisions as to where the image is going to play in 3 space for the audience. Okay. A Bruckheimer film, as such as this, is a fast cut film. They're just shy of 2,000 cuts in an 85 minute movie, right? Whereas, say, a Pixar movie might have 1,100 or 1,200 cuts. So when you're cutting very quickly, you have to make sure that the, the 3D uh, works with the eye and doesn't actually affect it in a negative way. So by producing it, uh, the visual effects in, or the 3D in post, it allows me to sculpt the 3D like I would the editing or the color or the sound. So this was actually created all in post. In, in, in moving from 2D to 3D, was there anything that got lost in translation? I think it's the other way around. This also was released in 2D as well. We have a, a 2D oh, okay. a theatrical release, you know, okay. film release. But what 3D does, I think, from a, a creative standpoint, it allows you to take very visually complex scenes and you can see more into it. It's the analogy would be if you had a very visual complex scene in black and white and you had the same photo in color, I could tell a lot more by looking at the color image than I could in the black and white. Same thing happens with 3D, is that you can then see more. On top of which, um, it's great to have the effect. It's like when the snake comes out or something like that, yeah. ah, you get those moments as well. So it's just, it just adds another dimension, literally, for the filmmaker. My favorite 3D moment was uh, the first time you see Mooch. Yes. It, like, it's like, is that a fly coming from your back? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we play with depth a lot. We really do, you know, to make it, make it work. Mooch, is that you? Are the others okay? And you know where they are? Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer said that it's the most 3D movie ever of any 3D film. Well, we're doing something that has yet to be done, and that is uh, it's, an, it's a widescreen release, but okay. we're actually projecting the top and bottom black mask, which technically allows us to allow the characters and effects to go out the mask and into the theater. So I don't know if you noticed that, but it's subcon oh. subconsciously it's a subtle thing, but you actually can watch the characters break the frame, particularly in the last reel, in the climax. They're right. breaking the film creatively. I can actually pull them out and put them back. So it's another kind of asset that we can use to help help make the 3D even more impressive. Wow. Now, um, how did you line up all the characters, you know, all the voices? Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is fantastic. You know, this is where I think Jerry Bruckheimer really shines, you know, as a producer. He gets in there and he helped us choose, you know, both the live cast and the, and the, and the vocal cast as well. And uh, Nicolas Cage was one that came up with a unique kind of voice vocalization for Speckles, who's a strange little character anyway, being right. a star nose mole. He did a perfect job, you know, and it is the voice of each of the characters that brings the life to each of the, uh, the G-Force, you know, members. I'm a mole. I got a thing for worms. <laughs> I think the moral of G-Force is to believe in yourself, you know, and by doing so, you can achieve anything that you want to do. Aww, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> G-Force in Disney Digital 3D. Oh, yeah! Whoa! Blaster, do something! What do you suggest I do? Open his hand! Open his hand! Jump, 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 jump.